Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We begin tonight with breaking news. One person is hospitalized after an explosion at a convenience store in Fergus Falls, Minnesota. Here's a live look at that convenience store. Emergency responders got the call to Pebble Lake Take 5 just before 3 this afternoon. Take 5 is just south of Fergus Falls. Fergus Falls Fire Chief Mark Hovland says repairs were being done on a refrigeration unit. There's that live look. And that's when the explosion happened. He says one person suffered burns and there's major damage to the building. The exact cause of the explosion is still under investigation. You've been hearing a lot lately about drug overdoses and public forums around our region. However, a possible solution to at least part of the problem is being ignored, according to a new report. The online opioids report conducted by the Criminal Justice Division of Fisher College in Boston basically calls the current regulation of illegal online drug sales a joke. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us what's happening. Altru Hospital treated 226 overdose cases just last year. However, a new study says nothing is being done to stop the sale of illegal drugs online. Simply search buy opioids and you're taken to very sophisticated sites that protect your identity and mail you the drugs you want. The study conducted by a criminal justice professor in Boston and his students says basically there's no regulation of online sales. Yeah, it's trivial. It's a joke. There are no barriers whatsoever. These are very sophisticated operations. They, they run like a business. And for the people behind them, they are a business. They're in the business of selling somebody something that's illegal. And Brun says when folks order those drugs online, they're taking a major gamble with their lives. He says sometimes they may receive the actual drugs they ordered. Other times they may receive a concoction of who knows what. You can get something that contains absolutely no active ingredients you could get the real product. When somebody orders these uh, drugs from a site like this, they're, they're rolling the dice. You really don't know what you're going to get. In big cities and towns across our region, an effort is being made to get opioids off the street. But it appears to still be a free-for-all on the Internet, using the U.S. Postal Service to deliver drugs door-to-door. -door. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. The opioids online report suggests a possible solution to the problem is government intervention to block those online sites that are selling illegal drugs. It's all information that's being submitted to the state of Massachusetts for its consideration. We'll have the full report online at valleynewslive.com when it's released within the next few days. It's an old scam with a new twist targeting people right here in the valley. A local mother contacted our whistleblower hotline after partially falling for a job scam. The mother was looking for work on the website care.com. She thought she landed the perfect job. Gave me a whole story about how they were from Fargo. They gave me an address and I looked up that address and it was a legit thing. But the gig was too good to be true, and now Alicia is left picking up the pieces. Coming up tonight on Valley News Live at 6, we'll tell you what exactly happened and how this is connected to someone's information being hacked locally. We're enjoying the sunshine and the warmth, but that quiet weather, it won't last for long. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson for a look at tonight's forecast. Hutch? Thank you, Andrea. And I got to tell you, as we look at the visible satellite imagery, we see this spiraling storm system that's a very slow mover as it creeps its way along the international border over the next three days. It's going to continue to pump cooler air in from the northwest while counties off to the east will stay a little milder. Here is a look at what we have going on right now on the radar. Just hit and miss sprinkles near Roseau and also in north central portions of North Dakota. And that cold air I was telling you about, a frost advisory has been posted for the western counties in North Dakota. Mid 60s right now in the FM area, a lot of 50s in portions of central North Dakota and central Minnesota. We'll join them in the 50s as we go through the 9 o'clock hour. It will still be a little breezy out there in the FM area if you're in Grand Forks this evening. A little bit cooler, a little quicker tonight. And in Lakes Country, likewise, we'll be down in the low 50s by bedtime tonight. So use the light jacket out there. Most of us will stay dry this evening. I'll tell you about our rain chances in the forecast. Mm -hmm. And for some, maybe a flake or two of snow in there as well. We'll tell you where all this is going to happen in a few moments. And a lot of people bought flowers lately, haven't they? They have. So some cold air is heading our way. Be prepared mm -hmm. for that. Thanks, Hutch. You bet. 
Investigators point to a criminal act as the cause of a deadly and devastating fire at a Texas fertilizer plant. That's the finding from federal investigators more than three years after the explosion and massive fire at the plant in West Texas killed 15 people, many of them first responders. Hundreds more people were hurt. The force of the blast was equivalent to a magnitude 2.1 earthquake, and it leveled parts of the small town between Dallas and Austin. Investigators won't say much on who or what started the fire. What I can tell you is that while there has not been any arrest made, the 400 plus interviews that have been conducted to date have produced many leads. Investigators are laying out some cold hard cash for hard answers. A reward up to $50,000. A rest area near Dalton, Minnesota is back open after a report of a man with a gun forced it to temporarily close. It happened at the Hansel Lake rest area on Interstate 94 this afternoon. The Minnesota State Patrol says a person called 911 and reported he had a handgun and that he was worried people were out to get him. After a short negotiation, the suspect was taken into custody without incident and taken to Lake Region Hospital in Fergus Falls for evaluation. No one was injured in that incident. A Facebook post from an angry service worker is making the rounds. It shows a $2 tip on a ticket that was $213. Many people say it's downright insulting. Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker spoke with two people who work in the service industry, and they tell us bad tippers come with the job. With this receipt from a Fargo restaurant making the rounds on social media, we had to know some of your thoughts on tipping. I feel like I'd be more likely to tip being served, actually, just for the fact that they're taking the time to come to you and they're being um, personal with you. I'm much more willing to tip someone that comes and serves me or a bartender. Here at Scratch Sandwich and Deli Company, the option for a person to tip happens whenever you pay. Diva Gaber says she and her colleagues make about $2 more an hour after the tips are split evenly. I just feel like um, maybe the area downtown is probably a little bit more people are willing to spend money. Alan Kaysen over at Pound says there are a few things a server can do to hopefully get a good tip. The hugest part I would say is being knowledgeable about your product. Things like that. What makes a good server is being able to grow on somebody, you know, to where it's, you know, you have to kind of feel out your, your clientele. However, Kaysen says no matter how nice you are as a server, you're going to run into bad tippers. A lot of the times it's um, lack of knowledge. If somebody's younger, they don't really understand the, the whole culture of tipping. Or it might be somebody who's just very against it. They don't realize that people make a living from their tips. Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. In most places across the United States, a good tip is considered at least 15%. We reached out to Duane's House of Pizza, where the receipt originated. They did not want to go on camera, but they did say they talked to the person who posted the picture of the receipt. As we promised yesterday, we reached out to several Minnesota schools in our viewing area concerning their bathroom policy for transgender students. Unfortunately, only two school districts got back to us. The first is from Kitson Central School District, and their superintendent said they don't have a formal policy in place, but he would expect the girls to use the girls' restroom and the boys to use the boys' restroom. He said they don't have any students who are impacted, and in the event they did, they would plan accordingly. And the superintendent at Crookston Public Schools said there is no one at this time, but they didn't tell us if they have a policy or plan to address the issue. If any other Minnesota schools get back to us, we'll be sure to update the web version of this story at valleynewslive.com. Our area letter carriers would like to pick something up at your house besides your letters. They would like some food. The annual Postal Service food drive is on for this weekend. So they'd like you to leave some non-perishable food items at your door or in or next to your mailbox Saturday, and they'll pick them up. This food drive is going on all across the country, and on Saturday, rather, and it's been around for a long time. Since it started in 1991, this campaign has collected some 1.4 billion pounds of food. That may sound like a lot, but they say the need is great and the number of people helping is not what you might think. Maybe you'll get like 10% uh, or 15% of the homes that participate. And you think if we could just bump that up to 25 or 50% of the homes participating just with a little bit of food, what a huge difference that would make. 
Locally, the food you'll donate will go to the Emergency Food Pantry and the Dorothy Day Food Pantry. And if you can't contribute Saturday, you can still do so. In the following days, simply leave your gift at your mailbox.